Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brick Workshop. My X-Carve CNC now has the Dewalt router mounted in it, and that router pushes air uh, past the cutter when it's spinning. And so a dust boot or dust shoe is absolutely imperative, otherwise you're going to end up with dust all over the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how I went about making this my dust boot for the X-Carve CNC. Now, uh, this isn't the first one I've made. There were several that uh, went in the bin as I went along. Now, this plastic insert that goes in here fits snugly around the base of the Dewalt writer. And I wanted plastic there rather than having the wood cut to size because after a while the wood would work its way loose. Uh, and so therefore this plastic is absolutely perfect. And that came from uh, a guttering downpipe. I'll put the details on the screen. Now this is one of my prototypes. It had the, the hole here uh, for that bit of uh, guttering pipe uh, to fit into and a hole for the uh, extraction hose. Um, and uh, this was one of the things I tried which was uh, just ordinary uh, thickish plastic, the sort of thing you would use on a building site for uh, putting a, a, a damp proof membrane across uh, uh, before you do some concreting or whatever. You know the plastic you get when you buy uh, stuff from a, a DIY shop or whatever and it's awkward to get into and you've got to take a pair of scissors to it. Well I tried cutting some of that up into strips and then cutting it uh, part of the way through to produce this sort of hairy effect uh, but that didn't work very well as I think I mentioned in a recent video. So I knew I had to go for bristle. Now over here in the UK it's very difficult to get those long strips of, I think they call it saw tash or something, uh, which is used in America. Lots of people making their own dust boots uh, buy that. Now uh, I could have used draft proofing material which you can get with sort of hairy bits on, uh, but I, that wouldn't have been quite right. You'd, you'd have to sort of modify it a bit and so on. So I thought I'd go back to basic principles and so I uh, did an internet search for people who made brushes and I contacted a company called the Hill Brush Company uh, there in the uh, south of England and I'll put their details on the screen and they're a really really good company because uh, they sent me some free samples of the bristle they use in brushes uh, and I had enough uh, with those free samples uh, to be able to produce actually two uh, dust boots. Anyway I'm really grateful to the Hill Brush Company uh, it was free of charge please <laughs> Don't contact them and say, hey, well, can I have some free samples? We're building this, that and the other. I think that would be unfair. Uh, but they helped me out in this particular situation. If you want to get bristle, uh, then the easiest way is to get yourself a, a brush. Uh, go, go to your cheap DIY store or wherever you get the cheapest things, the pound store, uh, and buy a brush and cut the bristle off. That's what I was about to do before I thought about contacting the brush company. Now this is made from 19 millimeter thick uh, plywood, good quality plywood, and uh, that then has been machined. I've created uh, two holes. The larger one here is in order to take this small section of a piece of guttering downpipe. And the second ho hole here is 35 millimeters in diameter, and that's designed for my Festool dust extractor hose. Now underneath here is a channel uh, which is three millimeters across and 10 millimeters deep. And that's uh, perfect uh, for taking the bristle. I used two methods to put the bristle in. One was using super glue, uh, which I used with the stiffer bristle. Uh, and I don't think that was particularly good. And this uh, particular one, which is my final version, which I'll be using all the time, uh, it's got thinner bristle, and this is held in with copy decks. Now, initially, I created a drawing file using uh, a program called DraftSite, which is free to download, uh, and it works in a similar way to AutoCAD. And if anyone would like the uh, file that I used, uh, I can produce it free of charge. I just need your email address. Alternatively, I'm quite happy to provide you with the VCarve Pro file uh, of this uh, particular bit of work. Uh, you'd have to do your own toolpaths, of course. And I will be making a video showing how to use VCarve Pro to produce this. And that will be coming out in the not too distant future. And that will focus on just the VCarve, not on the rest of the construction.
Before I break off the tabs, I'm just going to give this a sand because then uh, there's support for the sander across the whole of that field. And I'm just going to use my craft knife to cut through these here. And here we have that finished job and you can see quite clearly the channel where the bristles will go and it will be mounted up this way and probably as you look at it from the front more like that. Now I had an experiment, uh, I took some of the uh, bristle, you can see it here, and I used some glue, I don't know if it goes by this name the world over, uh, this is called Copydex, it's an odourless glue and it's supposed to stick most things together. And my eventual idea is that I would then use some hot melt glue on the inside of the channel to hold the bristles in place and I can trim them to length afterwards. Having created the long strip uh, and joined them together I thought I'd just try and feed them into the slot on here uh, and actually it was really tricky. I've just started to try another technique. Uh, what I did was I stuck a peg uh, in this position here and then I got a bunch of the uh, bristles and I pushed them into the slot and then pushed them up together and put another peg in here. And what I'm going to attempt to do now is just use a little bit of super glue, just hold these bristles in place so I can remove one of the pegs and put uh, some more bristles in. And I'll see if I can work round uh, and, and make some progress this way. And of course, the great advantage of using uh, super glue uh, is that uh, it's a fairly thin glue and the capillary action should take it down uh, into the uh, bristles themselves. And then I can use the peg to push it along so it's nicely bunched up together. Oh yes, this is working very nicely. And that's forming a nice bushiness there. So I'll put my next bit of super glue in. Well, here's the first one um, <laughs> with all its <laughs> bristles stuck in. Be because I only received samples, um, I had to sort of use them all really in order to have enough. And uh, I've stuck them in, they're all different lengths, and I've obviously got to trim them um, so they look all neat and tidy. The only thing that I'm worried about is whether the super glue will stand the test of time, uh, and of course, whether it's got uh, deep into the center. Uh, so that uh, none of the middle ones are going to fall out. But we'll see. <laughs> now when I was having to trim the thicker bristle, uh, the only solution I could find was to use my side cutters uh, because my scissors were not up to it. So having used super glue for the first one and the discovery of the problems with uh, the capillary action going uh, the wrong way, making the stiff bristles even stiffer, I then uh, tried using Copydex and uh, that worked really well. And I've also used the finer um, bristles. These are about 0 0.2, 0 0.25 of a millimeter. And these really are quite soft. And this is my final recommendation. If you're gonna make something like this, use very fine bristle and also uh, use Copydex uh, to stick it in. And I've made this uh, little gadget which uh, makes it slightly easier to bring the uh, bristles together. It's circular at this end and I've squished it down uh, so it's flat there. So I can then use that to poke them into the channel. With the uh, finer bristle, uh, I managed to use scissors to get this uh, to the right size. So I cut a piece of cardboard, which was roughly the length that I wanted the bristles to be, and then used that uh, to guide me as I went around. Uh, the first one, uh, made with the stiffer bristle uh, and also super glue, is frankly just a bit too uh, stiff here. And the second one, which was used with the finer bristle down to uh, 0.2 of a millimeter in the, this red stuff here, and that is quite soft. And I'm going to use this for the demonstration of it in action. <laughs> 
and I will be making a video which shows the VCarve Pro elements uh, that went into uh, the manufacture of the, the dust boot. Now, with all these things, there's always another way. And there's a possibility that you could have a, a dust boot that did not move up and down with the spindle, uh, but it's attached uh, so that it's always in the right X and Y position by being attached to the central part of the uh, mechanism here. And if you look carefully at the back here, there's a, a channel uh, and there's one on the other side as well. And that channel is not being used for anything. And it just so happens that a piece of uh, six millimeter brass rod uh, fits into that channel. Uh, it's not a, not a tight fit, uh, it's a loose fit. Um, and if you imagine you had uh, two of these each side uh, and you drilled and tapped uh, a screw thread in there, you would have the makings of some sort of mechanism uh, that could then hold uh, a stationary, or theoretically stationary in the Z direction, uh, dust boot. And it could be fixed then at a height which was perhaps a millimeter uh, above the piece that's being worked. And then the, uh, the spindle would go through, up and down through, an opening in the dust boot. And this is my final recommendation. If you're going to make something like this, use very fine bristle and also uh, use copy decks uh, to stick it in. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.